Let's practice adding integers and rational numbers together. For problems one through four, we're gonna go ahead and use a number line to show how we can add each of the following integers together. For number one, we have a positive nine plus a positive four. Let's start off by drawing a number line, so maybe something like this. So as we go to the left, this is going towards negative infinity. As we go towards the right, this is going to be positive infinity. And we're gonna start off with a nine and we're gonna be adding four to it. So if I put maybe like an eight over here, we could put a nine to the right of it then we're gonna be adding four, so that's a positive number. So we're gonna be going to the right, so that'll be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So just going ahead and putting a few numbers in. Here would be 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. We have space for 15, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it. So we're starting off with the number nine here. So we go and start by putting a dot right at that number nine. And because we're adding a positive four, that means we move to the right. So we're gonna go and say that's gonna be one, plus two, plus three, plus four. So we end up at 13 here. So when we add nine plus four, that's going to equal 13. For number two, we have nine plus negative four. So it's similar, but instead of adding a positive four, we're adding a negative four. Start off by drawing a number line here. Go ahead and put some arrows on it because it goes in both directions forever. To the left is negative infinity, to the right is positive infinity. So just like in number one, we're starting with the number nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this nine actually on the right side of the number line since we're not moving to the right at all, we're adding a negative four, so that means we're moving to the left, okay? So let's go ahead and put some numbers to the left of nine, like eight, we can put a seven, six, five, four, and I'm just gonna use up the space I have here. So I'll go to three and I'll go to two as well, okay? So the first number we're starting off with is a nine. Go ahead and put a dot, that's because that's where we're starting with, okay? And we're adding a negative four, so negative numbers mean we move to the left. So it's moving over a one, then two, then three, then four. So if we move to the left four spaces, we end up with the number five. So that means nine plus negative four equals positive five. All right, for number three, we have negative nine plus four. So notice how we're just using all the same types of numbers, just using their opposites. Now let's go ahead and make a number line here. Now we're starting with a negative nine, so we're gonna be in the negatives as opposed to the positives. Let's go ahead and just set up our number line here. And we are starting with negative nine, but we are going to be adding a positive number, so we are going to be moving to the right. So based on that, I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting negative nine to the left here. Since we're gonna be adding a positive number, we'll be moving towards the right. Like I just said, this would be negative eight, negative seven, negative six, negative five. These are all numbers that are getting bigger, negative four, and then negative three. All right, so there's just a few numbers. Now we're starting off with negative nine. Go ahead and put a dot over at negative nine. And if we're adding positive four, that means we're moving to the right. So go over a one, then two, then three, then four. So notice how we end up at negative five. That just means that negative nine plus four is equal to negative five. For number four, we have negative nine plus negative four. So this one's kind of interesting because we have two negative numbers here, okay? So just set up a number line. Now we're starting with this negative nine and we're moving to the left here. So we can go ahead and put our negative nine all the way on the right side and then put some numbers to the left of it like negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, and I have space for one more, maybe negative 14, okay? So we're starting off with negative nine, so I'll go ahead and put a dot at negative nine on the number line, and we're moving to the left four spaces. So here's one, here's two, here's three, and here is four. So if you add negative nine and negative four, that's gonna equal negative 13. Let's take a look at number five. For these ones, we're gonna be writing either always or sometimes or never in terms of whether these statements are equaling a positive number or not, okay? So for number five, it says a positive number added to a positive number. Well, that is always going to be positive, okay? No matter what, because a positive plus a positive, those are just regular numbers. That's always going to be positive, right? Now I'll just write the word here positive as well. For number six, it says a negative number added to a positive number. This is going to be sometimes, okay? This is gonna be sometimes positive because it really depends on which number has a greater absolute value, okay? So in some cases, imagine you have maybe like a negative seven plus five, 
right? Because the negative seven has a greater absolute value, this will be equal to negative two, so that's a negative number. But if you're adding a negative uh, five plus a positive seven, well, in this case, the seven has a greater absolute value and this will equal a positive number. So it's good to sometimes think of examples of how we can say we know it could go either way here, okay? For number seven, it says a positive number added to a negative number. Uh, just like in number six, this is also going to be sometimes positive, right? And it really just depends on the absolute value of each of the numbers, right? So if one's positive and one's negative, it really depends on which one. By which one, I just mean which one has a greater absolute value, so a positive plus a negative. So maybe we have like 10 plus negative two, well, 10 is definitely farther from zero, so this is gonna be still positive, right? That's gonna be eight. But if you have a positive number like two, and then you add negative 10 to it, well, negative 10 has a greater absolute value. That's gonna be negative eight, okay? And then for number eight, we have a negative number added to a negative number. This is going to be never positive, okay? So let's go ahead and write never positive. And that's just because if you add two negatives, you're just gonna get more negative, right? If you try to show an example here, like, I don't know, negative three plus negative five, well, you're below zero and you become even more below zero, that's just gonna be negative eight. As opposed to positive numbers, if you had a positive plus a positive, that's always gonna be positive because you stay above zero no matter what. Now let's go ahead and try adding some integers together here. For number nine, if you just add seven plus eight, that's just gonna equal 15. Okay, don't have to worry too much about those. For number 10, we have 14 plus 27. That's gonna be, let's see, I think it's 41. Okay, feel free to write it out if you need to. For number 11, these have different signs, so we're gonna do nine minus six, and that's going to be three. Okay, but it's gonna be negative because nine has a greater absolute value. For number 12, we have three plus negative 14. Because negative 14 has a greater absolute value, it's gonna be negative, and then 14 take away three is going to be 11. And then for 13, we have 17 plus negative eight. Well, that's really just 17 minus eight, which is nine, but it's gonna be positive because 17 has a greater absolute value. For number 14, 13 plus negative two, that's gonna equal 11. And that's gonna be positive because 13 has a greater absolute value. For number 15, negative five plus 14, that's gonna equal positive nine because 14 minus five is nine and 14 has a greater absolute value, so it stays positive. For 16, negative three plus 25 is 22. It's really just 25 minus three. 25 has the greater absolute value, so it stays positive. For 17, we have negative 17 plus 12. That's really 17 minus 12, which is five. And it's negative because seven, negative 17 has a greater absolute value. For 18, negative 24 plus 18 is going to be negative six because uh, that negative 24 has a greater absolute value than 18. And then for 19, we're adding two negatives here. So negative 18 plus negative 25, we should just add their absolute values. That's gonna be a total of negative 43. And then finally for number 20, we're adding two negatives again. So negative nine plus negative 15, it's just nine plus 15, which is 24 and keep it negative. Again, some patterns to look at are if you look at number nine, number 10, and you also look at problems like number 19 and number 20, they both have the same sign, so you just add their absolute values and then you just keep the same sign that you started with, okay? Uh, if you take a look at some other ones like number 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, in each of these instances, you had a positive and a negative. Whenever you have one positive and one negative, just make sure you subtract their absolute values instead of adding them, and then take the sign of whichever one has the greater absolute value or whichever one is further from zero. Now let's try working with some rational numbers, so dealing with some fractions and decimals. For number 21, we're adding decimals here, so make sure we line up the decimals. We have 5.3 plus 9.6. I'm gonna to try to write out all my work step-by-step step for these ones. Three plus six is nine, bring the decimal straight down when we're adding. Five plus nine is gonna be 14 here. So uh, the sum here is going to be 14.9, okay? Moving on to number 22, it looks like we have a positive and a negative. So again, when they have opposite signs, what we're gonna do is subtract their absolute value. So let's go ahead and take this uh, 3.9 and let's subtract 3.5. So 3.9 minus 3.5, 9 minus 5 is 4, 3 minus 3 is 0, so we have 0 
That's what we know the value is going to be, but in terms of whether it's positive or negative, we're going to go with a positive one just because 3.9 is greater than 3.5 in terms of their absolute values. Okay. Moving on to number 23. In this case, we have a negative and a positive, so we have to go ahead and subtract their absolute values again. So 6.5 minus 2.9. Now we're gonna go ahead and borrow. This is gonna become a five, and this is gonna become a 15. 15 minus nine is six, and then five minus two is three. So we're getting 3.6 here, okay? So again, we subtracted because they had different absolute values, and the sign here is going to be negative just because the negative 6.5 has a greater absolute value. Moving on to number 24, notice how we have two negatives. If they both have the same sign, then we can just go ahead and add their absolute values. So 8.3 plus this 5.2, a negative plus a negative is just more negative, three plus two is five and then eight plus five is gonna be 13, okay? So uh, this negative plus a negative, that's gonna be negative 13.5. All right, moving on to number 25, we start getting into some fractions here. Now, what's nice about number 25 is we do have common denominators, so we can go ahead and add this two plus three, and that's just gonna be over eight, and then two plus three is five, so we have five over eight here. For number 26, this one's also pretty nice because we have common denominators again. Now, if we have common denominators, then eight is gonna be what we're writing on bottom. On top, let's just make sure we write this three here and we're gonna be adding a negative two, okay? So whenever you see this negative sign that's in the middle of a fraction bar, just move it to the numerator, okay? And give it to that two, so that's gonna be a negative two. Now, what's three plus negative two? Well, the two and the three, they have different signs. One's negative, one's positive, so subtract their absolute values. 3 minus 2 is going to be 1, so it's going to be 1 eighth here. Let's check out number 27. For 27, we have uh, more fractions, but they have common denominators, which is still really, really nice. Okay, If you see this minus sign here, again, give it to the numerator. So we have common denominators of 15, so we'll keep that on the bottom. And moving that negative to the 7, this is negative 7 and then plus 2. Okay, now negative seven plus two, they have different signs. So we just subtract their absolute values. Seven minus two is going to be five. And we're gonna keep it negative because the negative seven has a greater absolute value. Okay, now at this point when we're dealing with fractions, make sure we just put that negative back in the middle of the fraction bar. So it's gonna be negative five over 15. And then if we go ahead and simplify this by using their GCF because five and 15 aren't relatively prime, we can divide top and bottom by their GCF of five. And so our final uh, sum here is gonna be negative one third. For number 28, we have common denominators once again, which is really, really nice here. Um, so let's keep the 20 on the bottom. Okay, and then for this negative uh, three over 20, let's give that negative to the three. So we'll put a negative three on top here. And then we're gonna add, and then this negative in front of the five over 20, let's give that to the five on top. So that's gonna be a negative five. Okay, now if we're adding a negative three plus negative five, we just add their absolute values. That's gonna end up being negative eight because a negative plus a negative is always negative. Okay, so we have negative eight over 20. And then we can move that negative sign to the middle of the fraction bar, just like we did in the last example. So we have negative eight over 20. Now try to think about what common factors they have. Now their GCF happens to be four. Feel free to write out that work if you need to. Uh, dividing these numbers both by four, we should get relatively prime numbers if we use the GCF. So eight divided by four is two and 20 divided by four is five. So negative two fifths would be our final solution. For number 29, we have fractions here, but unfortunately they don't have common denominators anymore, right? So if we take a look at the denominators of eight and six, we can actually go ahead and see if we can find out their LCD first, right? So they have a two in common, that's gonna be four and three. So if you wanna find out their LCD, you can multiply these all together if you'd like to. So the least common denominator here is going to be 24. Okay, so let's go ahead and get those uh, same denominators. We can multiply this by three and this by three to get 24 and six times four and one times four. Okay, so rewriting these and also at the same time moving this negative to the top. Five times three is going to be 15, but it's going to be a negative 15 and then plus and then this one times four over here, that's going to equal four. So we have negative 15 plus four in the numerator. And in the bottom where the denominators, we have 24, and this also matches. So we have common denominators of 24, which was the goal, okay? 
Now on top, for this negative 15 plus four, they have different signs, so we're gonna subtract their absolute values. 15 minus four is going to be 11, and it's gonna be a negative 11, since the negative 15 has a greater absolute value. So we have negative 11 over positive 24, and then just move that negative sign back to the middle of the fraction bar when we are done. Now 11 and 24 are relatively prime, so this is as simplified as we can write this. For number 30, notice how we have uncommon denominators again. So we have to find out when nine and 15 meet for the first time. So for nine and 15, they have a common factor of three. So this would be three and five. And if you wanna find out when the first time these meet, because three and five relatively prime, we can stop. So three times three times five means that the LCD or the least common denominator is going to be 45. Okay, so nine times five will get you there. So whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. And then 15 times three and four times three is what we're gonna to do to get common denominators as well. So let's go ahead and multiply some stuff out here. So seven times five, that's going to be 35, okay? Plus, and then we're gonna give this negative over to the four on top. Four times three is 12, so it's gonna be a negative 12. So we have negative 12 added on to the 35. And then on the bottom here, this is 45 and this is 45. So just like as we planned, we should have common denominators of 45. Now 35 plus negative 12, that's really the same thing as 35 minus 12. Since they have different signs, we're gonna subtract their absolute values. 35 minus 12 is gonna be 23. So it's gonna be positive because 35 is a greater absolute value. So we're gonna get 23 over 45, which these two numbers are relatively prime. So we are done. Moving on to number 31, we have two more fractions we're adding with uncommon denominators. So let's go ahead and find out when eight and 10 meet for the first time. They definitely meet at 80, but I think they meet earlier. So this is gonna be four and five. So the LCD here is going to be 40, okay? Now eight is gonna meet there on its fifth time, so times five times five, and 10 is gonna meet there on its fourth time, so times four times four. Okay, make sure we give these negative signs to the numerators, both of these, okay? So that's gonna be a negative whatever three times five is, three times five is 15. So we're gonna have negative 15 over here, plus, and then seven times four is 28, but it's gonna be negative. So it's gonna be a negative 28. And then underneath both of these numbers, we're gonna have eight times five or 10 times four, which is 40. So let's go ahead and write that as our common denominator. Now we know hopefully that a negative plus a negative is always negative, so it's just gonna become more negative. So 15 plus 28 is going to be 43 or negative 43. Okay, now we can go ahead and move that negative sign to the middle of the fraction bar. So we have negative 43 over 40. Then as a mixed number, if we wanna write it, we could write negative one and three fortieths. So for 32, we have one final problem with fractions, but unfortunately we don't have common denominators. So let's see when 20 and eight meet for the first time. I think four is their GCF. That's gonna be a five and a two. I think five and two are relatively prime. So it looks like these actually meet at 40 again. So that's actually kind of similar to the last one we just did, okay? So to get to 40, we can do 20 times two. Do it to the top as well. To get to 40, that's gonna be the fifth time eight gets there. Okay, let's go ahead and rewrite these, but make sure this negative goes to the top. Okay, so nine times two is gonna be 18, but it's gonna be negative 18. Okay, and then the seven times five is gonna be 35. So we're gonna write plus 35. And on the bottom for the denominators, these are both 40, which was part of the plan. So we're gonna write 40 underneath. Now for negative 18 plus 35, they have different signs. So let's go ahead and subtract their absolute values. 35 minus 18 is going to be 17. And we're gonna keep it positive because 35 had a greater absolute value. And then 40 is gonna stay on bottom. Now since 17 and 40 are relatively prime, we can't simplify, so we are all done. So there you have 32 different practice problems dealing with adding integers and then rational numbers. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. And as always, keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next one.